So here we have two Xbox Series X and two calibrated LG C1 OLED. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of Dolby Vision versus HDR10 gaming using Forza Horizon 4, Outriders, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, and Dirt 5. Keep watching. This video is sponsored by Omaze. This is Forza Horizon 4, Dolby Vision on your left, HDR10 on your right. Now, Forza Horizon 4 is not compatible with HGIG, but it does offer in-game brightness slider. So what we're going to do is to go into the menu screens on two separate Xbox Series X. You know, it's not going to be easy to do, but you know, I shall try using only a pair of hands. And what I'm going to do is to do the same thing on the Xbox Series X on the right. And I think, you know, you probably will notice now that Dolby Vision and HDR10 have different HDR white point and HDR brightness settings optimally. So on the TV on your left, if I actually lower the HDR white point, you can see the Forza icon and the white point will need to go up to around 1000 nits in Dolby Vision before the icon will clip. And you know, for the HDR brightness, it is not going to be easy for you to see due to how I've exposed this HDR footage, but I think, you know, on the Dolby Vision presentation, I found myself needing to go up to 35 before the first icon became barely visible. Whereas, you know, on the HDR10 presentation on your right, the HDR white point is going to be around 800 nits if you set HDR2 mapping to HGIG on the TV. And with HDR brightness, you know, I found myself needing to go up to 25 before the first icon became visible. And if we accept all these settings and get back out into the game, hopefully you can see that, you know, the picture isn't really very different in terms of the color temperature and grayscale because both sets have been calibrated. But what I can see is definitely that the sun is probably a bit clearer on the Dolby Vision presentation with better retention of specular highlight detail, especially around this area, whereas it is a bit more blown out here on the HDR10 version. But on the plus side, the HDR10 presentation is a bit brighter in terms of the overall brightness or APL, whereas you know, it is a bit dimmer on the Dolby Vision presentation. And I think this will hold true for most games that have in-game peak brightness sliders. If you set them both optimally, you know, the picture will be quite similar, but still I think the Dolby Vision output from the Xbox Series X will still retain a bit more speckle highlight detail at the expense of average picture level. And then, you know, the HDR10 version will be a bit more prone to blowing out speckle highlight detail, even though you have set the in-game peak brightness slider, the white clipping point correctly, it will still blow it out slightly compared with the Dolby Vision presentation. Now, instead of driving fast cars in a game, how would you like to drive a Tesla Model S plate in real life? The sponsor of this video, Omaze, is giving you the chance to win one. Omaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating money to chosen charities all across the world. And until the 11th of December 2021, Omaze is giving away a Tesla Model S plate, which can go from 0 to 60 in under 2 seconds, thanks to more than 1,000 horsepower. Should you choose to donate and enter for the chance to win a Tesla Model S plate, your donation will support the Reverb charity, which partners with musicians, festivals, and venues to make concerts more environmentally friendly, including the elimination of 3 million single-use plastic water bottles at shows. To potentially win a Tesla Model S plate and support a great cause, visit omaze.com forward slash test Tesla. Thank you for your support. Right, let's continue our Dolby Vision versus HDR10 gaming comparison. When I fired up Outriders on two separate Xbox Series X, Dolby Vision on your left and HDR10 on your right, the first thing that struck me when I reached the character selection screen was that there is significantly more visible posterization in the background on the Dolby Vision presentation, whereas you know it is much smoother on the HDR10 version. Now note that I have actually set both TVs, both LG C1s to PC mode, because you know, I 
have found that setting it to PC mode not only restores full 444 chroma, but also reduces the instances of posterization in 4K 120Hz HDR gaming. And that is what I've done on both TVs. But despite that, you can see that the Dolby Vision version is still exhibiting more posterization. And if we go into the advanced settings and go into clarity to try and use smooth gradation, LG's decontouring filter to try and smooth it out and attenuate the posterization, it doesn't really work that well. And you know, I don't think there is any difference at all as if smooth gradation is not working in game optimizer mode. And therefore, you know, there is no way to actually avoid posterization with 4K 120Hz Dolby Vision Gaming. Note that I stress that this is only visible at 4K 120Hz. So let's say if I actually fire up the VR information bar, you can see that we are running at 120Hz on both TVs. You know, obviously, if you pay attention to the last line here, for HDR10, the Xbox Series X will be outputting 10-bit RGB using up an HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second, which is the limit of both the LG C1 and also the Xbox Series X. Whereas with Dolby Vision output, because Xbox Series X is using the low latency version or player-led or source-led version of Dolby Vision, it is outputting 12-bit YCPCR422. I know that it says 8-bit here, but to a sync device, any YCPCR422 will look the same whether it is 8-bit, 10-bit or 12-bit and conservatively LG OLEDs will always report it as 8-bit which is why you see 8-bit here. In reality, it is going to be 12-bit and because of this, the HDMI 2.1 bandwidth that is used is only 32 gigabits per second which is less than the 40 gigabits per second used by the HDR10 version. Maybe that contributes to the posterization, I don't know. But if we switch to 4K 60Hz output in Dolby Vision on the Xbox Series X on your left. Let me get into the TV and display options and set the refresh rate to 60Hz. And then I will need to restart the game. Okay, now we are back in the game with Dolby Vision on your left and it is at 60Hz now, so it is not using the FRL pipeline, it is only using TMDS and this is still in Dolby Vision and you can see here hopefully that the background is much smoother comparable to UHD resolution 120 frames per second on the HDR10 version. It is significantly better than what we saw at 4K 120Hz. So I think you know the Dolby Vision posterization in game optimizer mode on the LG C1 is only limited to 4K 120Hz and I don't know whether it is caused by the Xbox Series X or the LG C1 because realistically currently only LG TVs are compatible with 4K 120Hz Dolby Vision so I couldn't troubleshoot whether the issue is with the display or with the source. But let's move on to the next game. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is a game that goes all the way up to 10,000 nits in terms of the in-game peak brightness without letting users change it in any manner, either from the Xbox Series X console or in the game itself. So from that point of view, by putting this game in a Dolby Vision container, it actually helps with retention of specular highlight detail, even though this game is actually not in Dolby Vision natively. So if I can actually get out from here and show you some examples of better retention of specular highlight detail on the Dolby Vision presentation you can see around here and you can see on the side of the plane as well. And even in the clouds and just around the sun, the Dolby Vision presentation just seemed to be able to retain more specular highlight detail without drastically lowering the overall APL. Going into the game itself, I can see a bit more posterization in the sky on the Dolby Vision presentation. But if I wanted to recover a bit more specular highlight detail on the HDR10 output, then I can go into the picture menu, go into the brightness submenu, and then switch HDR tone mapping off, which will default to a 4000 nit tone curve because the console is not outputting any metadata. And you can see that the whites are probably slightly duller than what you see on the Dolby Vision output here. 
and if I go up to on, then it will brighten it up, obviously. But you know, by going up to on, what you will do also is to, again, you know, if I turn around to the sun here, to the sun here as well, it will also clip a lot of the detail in the clouds. You can see here, and then you know, if I switch it off, then it will recover the speckle highlight detail, but the clouds may also become slightly duller in terms of the impact as well. They have roughly the same shade. HGIG will restore the impact, but will clip. I think, you know, overall, the Dolby Vision presentation is more balanced, you know, with good preservation of specular highlight detail and also the overall HDR impact, except that, you know, there's some posterization in the sky as well. This is Dirt 5. Now, this game is HDIG compliant, so on the HDR10 version on your right, I have set it correctly in the Xbox Series X console. And if I get out from the picture menu on both TVs, you can see that, you know, it is slightly out of sync, but you know, that is unavoidable because we're using two separate consoles, so it is almost impossible for us to sync them perfectly. Also, another problem is that the weather system in Dirt 5 is rendered dynamically, so it is not going to be easy for us to assess things on a level playing field. But overall, I think, you know, it would be fair to say that both are fairly similar. If anything, the overall APL was slightly brighter on the HDR10 presentation, whereas, you know, it is slightly dimmer on the Adobe Vision version. But, you know, it is really not night and day. And in terms of specular highlight detail, you know, we can probably see a bit better preservation of highlight detail around here compared to the HGIG version but still you know it is really not night and day I think you know Dolby Vision just inherently will retain a bit more specular highlight detail but keep the APL or average picture level slightly lower I would be happy playing the game either in Dolby Vision or HDR10 with HGIG engaged now, some users have claimed that Dolby Vision games look so much better than playing the same games in HDR10. Despite our side-by-side -side comparisons showing that the difference wasn't really night and day, even if the Dolby Vision presentation did a slightly better job at preserving bright highlight details in some games. I think I know the reason for this discrepancy in Dolby Vision experience, so let me explain and demonstrate. Here, I have swapped the cables over, so on your right would be the Dolby Vision presentation from an Xbox Series X, and on your left would be the HDR10 output from another Xbox Series X. The picture hopefully will look fairly similar to your eyes in terms of the colors and also the grayscale through whatever is encoded by YouTube. But if I go into advanced settings and reset the picture setting, first on the Dolby Vision presentation and also on the TV that is outputting HDR10. Then hopefully you can see that there is a drastic difference in color temperature now. And the image on your left, which is in HDR10, will look bluer, lacking in pop and depth. Whereas, you know, on your right, the Dolby Vision presentation is more colorful with more pop and depth. And the reason is because the out-of-the-box Dolby Vision game optimizer picture preset on the LG C1, and in fact, any LG OLED, I presume, is going to be better calibrated than the out-of-the-box HDR10 game optimizer mode. So let's say if we go into game optimizer mode and go into advanced settings, go into color, you can see that under white balance, the color temperature is zero which is bluer than the D65 white point commonly used within the film and broadcast industry and increasingly in the gaming industry as well. But if we go into the game optimizer mode in Dolby Vision on the LG C1 on your right, go into color and we go into white balance, you can see that you know it is set correctly to warm 50, which is the closest color temperature to the D65 white point. And that is the primary reason I think why some of you claimed that Dolby Vision looked more colorful with better pop and depth than HDR10, probably because you were using the default HDR10 game optimizer mode without adjusting it, without actually optimizing it 
or without calibrating it. So I have done another video showing you how to optimize the settings on your LG C1, you know, with the PS5 and the same principles apply here as well. If we adjust color temperature to warm 50 to approximate D65 white point, and if we go to brightness and we set HDR tone mapping to HGIG, so that you know it respects the in-game peak brightness slider without performing additional tone mapping, then you can see that hopefully the image will be fairly similar in terms of the colors and grayscale. Obviously, on these two particular samples, the Dolby Vision presentation is brighter with more pop, and that is because the HDR10 version is currently not calibrated at all. You know, I just did some quick adjustment. Once I calibrated it, it will be very similar to the Dolby Vision output, but out of the box, I would say that the Dolby Vision game optimizer mode on LG C1 and extending to most LG OLEDs will be more accurate and better calibrated at factory than the default HDR10 game optimizer mode. Let's sum up. Overall, playing games in Dolby Vision allow for better retention of bright highlight detail, most noticeably in games whose HDR brightness output couldn't be properly adjusted either through HGIG or via in-game video settings. However, when played at 4K 120Hz, Dolby Vision games manifested more posterization than playing in HDR10. So for games that are HGIG compliant or offer in-game brightness adjustments, we generally prefer to stick with HDR10 if playing at 4K 120Hz. Of course, one thing to remember is that at the time we filmed this video in August 2021, none of these Xbox Series X games have been developed with Dolby Vision support natively. They have all been converted from HDR10 to Dolby Vision by the Xbox Series X console. Perhaps the results will be different once Xbox Series X games with native Dolby Vision support are out on the market, at which point we'll probably have to do another comparison video if there's enough demand from you guys, of course. Because let's face it, we are the only two-man team stupid enough to buy two Xbox Series X and get two LG C1 OLEDs in to do true side-by-side -side comparison videos. I would like to thank Richard Sounds Manchester for their help with this video, so please support this channel by considering buying your next television from them. To watch more of our game console comparison videos, please click here for our playlist, and I'll see you in the next video.